Hey everybody, this is Christy Furio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer from Voga Coffee. You know, not a lot has changed in coffee brewing over the last few decades, really. But sometimes something comes along that absolutely revolutionizes what your expectations are. And that is the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer. Their SCA award-winning technology gives you unprecedented control over a range of flavors that previously you might not have even expected from your coffee. Along with this consistency, the precision, and control, you get versatility because on top of being an amazing batch brewer, it can also make batch ice lattes, batch cold brew, hot chocolate, tea, and this kind of versatility is something that I think you really do need to explore. So if you want the best batch brew possible, if you want that versatility, then I think the Ground Control Cyclops Brewer is perfect for you. Go find out more information over at their website, vogacoffee.com. That's V-O-G-A coffee.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly. Espressly works with independent coffee shops like yours to develop your very own beautifully designed, elegantly functional, branded mobile app. Uh, the fact is, is that you work very hard at creating the experience that your customers have with your coffee, with your staff. You've got these relationships but you also want to offer them services like the convenience of mobile ordering, especially during these times with COVID and the mobile ordering is just continuing to grow. Um, you want them to have a great experience and have the convenience. And that's what Espresso is all about doing, putting those two things together in your own custom branded mobile app. Uh, there's no setup fee. This is a no risk model. There's no setup fee or development fees. It integrates with Square. You have a drive through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities. It stores the value in the app, and you also get to keep the data. So Espressly is offering an awesome service here. Uh, they exist to serve independent coffee shops like yours. And again, bring together the convenience of mobile ordering with the experience that your customers know and love from your business. So to sign up today and learn more, hop on over to Espressly.co. That's Espressly. Co. Okay, everybody. Well, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you are not just one of the gang. And this is a topic that I think has to come up occasionally when we have bosses who really want to be friends with the baristas. They want to be friendly and maybe overly so. There's nothing wrong with being friendly. There's nothing wrong with being nice. In fact, you should be nice. You should be friendly. You, you should be a personable person, right? But there's a big difference between that and acting as though you are just one of the baristas and almost trying to gain validation through your efforts in trying to be just one of the gang. And one of the ways that this happens is you enter the space without much of a plan in terms of how you're going to use your presence. I think that's really key. Your presence in the coffee shop is always going to be attached to your position. Uh, this goes for anybody who is either a manager or an owner. If you have authority, you are separated, in a sense, from the group of baristas who work together in that shop and have uh, their own separate culture. You stand outside that culture and look inward and curate what happens in the shop based on what you see. And if you try to jump the fence and become one of the gang, it really starts confusing things. That's not your role. And they know that that's not your role. And it becomes one of those, uh, you know, hey, fellow kids moments where you, you, you're trying to become just one of the gang, like a mom or a dad trying to be cool in front of their teenager's friends. And really, it doesn't matter what age you are. It matters that the position separates you. And any effort to try to close that gap through almost trying to forget that you're the manager or the owner will inevitably frustrate your baristas. It will frustrate you, especially because now when things go wrong, you have to put the authority hat back on that you took off. And now people don't really respect you in that position. What they've seen you do, in effect, is deny your authority to tell them what to do, to make hard decisions. To act. Maybe you need to fire somebody. Maybe you need to have a hard talk with a barista. But that's really difficult to have an honest and hard talk with somebody if you're constantly hanging out and going out for drinks all the time, creating this rapport that's not really based on the work, 
but based on your desire to validate yourself in relationships outside your role as an authority in the coffee shop. I think it's really critical that we embrace our authority and use it for the good of the staff instead of trying to forget our authority or apologize for it by playing light with it, by ex- pretending that it doesn't exist. Nobody is helped by you pretending that you're not the boss, especially not when they need a boss. They need somebody to be the leader in lots of different circumstances. In fact, this year has been the year where leaders have really had to step up to the plate. And some of the people that have had the hardest time doing that are people who have never really practiced it to begin with. They've been afraid of their authority and they've been afraid to be the boss because they just want to be liked. They want to be the best friend. And again, that's not going to help anybody. I really encourage you to read the book, It's Okay to Be the Boss by Bruce Tulgan. Of course, a serial guest on this show now three times. It probably won't be the last time. I'll link to all of his episodes in the show notes. But this is not just a problem with cafes. This is a problem with lots of different industries where there are employees and there are managers and there are owners and bosses. The dynamic between you and them has to be respected, and you've got to use the authority that you've inherited for their good, and don't try to just soft-pedal it or get rid of it, because it doesn't really make them feel at ease. It doesn't do anything for the company, you. uh, It just ends up being a big mess. And if you want to be better at this, I would encourage you to start pulling away a little bit from the conversations that you're used to having that aren't focused on work, they're not focused on employee development or the business, and start integrating more work-related, business-related conversations with your employees. Little bits of formation and formative conversations here and there, and start to amplify that and take on more of a leadership presence and realize that you have to manage your presence. When you walk into a coffee bar, everything you do communicates something that either reinforces the things that are good and should be continued, or it reinforces bad habits and things that are dysfunctional that should be addressed but are not being addressed because instead of being the boss, we're really just trying to be one of the gang. So I hope that this episode has been helpful for you. Check out the links to the related episodes to this topic in the show notes for further listening. And so uh, thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate you all. And I will see you here next week on another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.